Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. George Donnelly, Swanson Industrial, Johnny. Afraid we're having engine trouble. Come again? We got a substantial policy on the Belo Horizonte Railroad in Brazil. Both equipment and personnel. It's only a small road, but our losses in the past few months have been extensive. What happened? Uh, four locomotives piled up in two months, 20 dead. We got a pair of conflicting reports. Looks like either insurance fraud or murder. With my luck, George, it's probably both. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you Edmund O'Brien in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Here's a taste treat you can enjoy indoors, outdoors, at work, or at play. The cool, long-lasting mint flavor refreshes you. The smooth, steady chewing helps keep you fresh and alert. Adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Swanson Industrial Insurance Corporation of Hartford. Attention, George Donnelly. The following is an accounting of my expenditures during investigation of the Belo Horizonte Railroad matter. Expense account item one, $500.38 transportation Hartford to New York to Rio de Janeiro. I found the executive offices of the railroad, all right. Avenue Graca Aranha, 392. But I didn't find the president, Mr. Benjamin J. Hulley. Reason? They'd taken him to the hospital that afternoon. A nurse at the Santa Maria told me that Benjamin Hulley had left strict orders that the minute I came in, I should be admitted to his room. I found him propped up in a bed. There was the smell of alcohol and boiled milk. Ulcers. Peptic or duodenal, we don't know. Nobody knows. The end product of acid indigestion. Insurance? <laughs> You'll have ulcers, too. Probably. It starts with heartburn. Then the gnawing pain before meals. Then all of a sudden, you've got them. The disease is a businessman. Hey, maybe we'd better postpone our talk for a while. Now, what's the difference whether I think about it or talk about it? This way I get it out of my system. Otherwise, it eats at me. Consider yourself a treatment. Well, we'll cut it short. I can give you a condensed version. Four locomotives, 20 dead. Yeah, but what am I giving you this for? You've got reports. Two of them. One said accidental. The other said equipment had been tampered Ridiculous. with. Ridiculous. Accidental. How could it possibly be accidental? Four in two months. Easy, Mr. Four Hulley, in two no, months. Easy. Listen to the facts. One engine caved in a wooden trestle over the rear of the A trestle that had held up for almost a half century. Two dead. Only cabin tender, luckily... Could have been a freight. Another derailed and bombed a statue. Two more uh, collided off a siding a few miles west of the port of Vittorio. Accidental, my foot. Who sent you the accidental report? Myers, Henry Myers, foreman of the roundhouse at Belo Horizonte. That stupid, moronic, idiotic, blundering fool. Now you're going to pop something carrying on like this, Mr. Holly. If you don't calm down, I'm going to get kicked out of here. Don't treat me like a baby. I know what I'm doing. Now... I meant to write a personal letter to Mr. Donnelly thanking him for the checks. They were prompt, very prompt. Your company is to be complimented. We'd rather be informed. Just what kind of a railroad do you run, Mr. Holly? Manganese. Nothing but manganese. A little bauxite, but not enough to cover the bottom of a gondola car. Manganese is our load. And if you ask me, that's the trouble right there. Where? Peter Yaradan. Who's Peter Yarada? Uh, he's beyond description, Mr. Dollar. The greediest, trickiest man I've ever known. I haul manganese for a competitor. At first, he tried to buy me out. I wouldn't sell. Then he used other methods. He spread vicious rumors about Belo Horizonte Railroad stock being worthless. It almost ruined me. How about the crashes? 
Isn't there any evidence that someone tampered with the machinery? No, none. Whatever proof might have existed would have been destroyed in the crash. Which is exactly why I suspect Yaradan. Why, with this railroad in his hands, he'd control the entire market down here. Well, I think I've taken up enough of your time, Mr. Holly. Uh, Mr. Dollar, I'm an old man. I've, I've worked very hard. I started as an engineer with this railroad 25 years ago. Worked myself up to the presidency. Whatever this road is, I've made it. I'd be everlastingly grateful if you'd put Yarov Den just where he belongs, behind bars. My job is investigation, not prosecution, Mr. Holly. Take my word, Mr. Dollar. It's Yarov Den. Well, before I go any further, I'd like to talk to this Myers, the foreman in Belo Horizonte. That's very wise. It's about 400 miles north. I'll have a car and driver waiting for you in the morning. <laughs> That is what my mother has named me. I do not know why. Perhaps after a pig or a cow, my mother named all her children after animals. Uh, it is what you might call nickname. Of course, nicknames are terrible things. They stick to you like paste. You like the way I drive? Ah, you drive swell. Swell? Uh, good, fine, great. Oh, no, no, not that. The compliments are too much. Uh, maybe fine, perhaps good, but not great. Why you go to Belo Horizonte, Mr. Dollar? Business? Ah, you're silly. Hmm? You're silly. You think you can keep your business from me? You think you are hiding something in the state of Minas Gerais? You're foolish to try. Then why am I going to Belo Horizonte? Your name is Johnny Dollar. You investigate people for an insurance company. You are here by the engine crashes. You are going up to see Mr. Myers, who worked for Mr. Holly. You will find nothing. Is that enough? Where did you find out these bits of information? Ah, uh, around the town, around the town. How do you know I won't find anything? A brilliant mind. A gift of my father, who also had a brilliant mind. Uh, tell me, do I really look like a driver? Why? What are you supposed to be? Uh, this is merely a costume. I am in reality a poet, philosopher, a seventh son. Hey, can't you make this thing go faster, seventh son? Ah, Americans. Through the mountains faster. You are crazy. That is why you make so much money, and that is why Americans have old sons. My name is Dollar, Mrs. Myers. Yeah. From Hartford, Connecticut, insurance investigator. I'd like to talk to your husband, if I may. He ain't here. When do you expect him? I don't know. Is it about the wreck? That's right. Well, I don't know if it'd be right to ask you or not. Well, it's up to you. I'm not from the police, you know. Yeah, I suppose it'll be all right. Thanks. He's shaving. Oh, I got plenty of time. Saturday evening post just coming from the States, if you like to see it. Oh, fine, thanks. And there's caramels on the table. <laughs> Never touch the stuff. I'd like you to know, Mr. Dollar. Yeah. Well, I'd like you to know Henry don't know a thing about this business. I just wanted to ask him some questions about the accident report he sent into our office. He wrote what he's seen, and that was all he wrote. I wouldn't be concerned, Mrs. Myers. And no matter what anybody says. Henry had no more to do with the busted pins and them rods than the man in the moon. He checked before it went out of the yard, and he checked Brand. just before... Uh-oh. Said enough. Get into the kitchen. I didn't say nothing to him. Go on. I didn't say a thing. She talks a lot. Dollar, did you see? That's right. She talks a great deal for a woman her age. Her parents let her gab all the time. Have a caramel? No, thanks. Say, uh... What's this about busted pins? Yeah, she mouths. Come on, Myers. If you've got nothing to hide, there's no sense of aiding the questions. The pins were sawed. Somebody, I don't know. I should have checked them before they left the yard, but I didn't. That's why you reported the crashes as accidental? All right, I was scared. A man gets scared for his job. How do you know about the busted pins? After the wreck, one of the guys told me. You mean somebody knew the pins were broken and he let the engine leave the yards? Yeah. Who? Come on, Myers. Who? You'll have to find that out yourself, Dollar. You're in plenty of trouble, Myers. I told you all I'm going to tell you. Now get out of here. Okay. But if you change your mind, I'll be at the San Carlos Hotel. I'll remember that. The San Carlos. All day. <laughs> He 
If you sit here in your room all day, Mr. Dollar, you do not have the benefit of the sunshine which plays so gently upon the soil. I'm waiting for a call, Seeker. Are you certain you would not like another game of Monopoly? No, you won't. It's company you are dull. Sorry. If it were not orders, I would go back home. Yeah? If I insulted you, would you fight with me? Oh, too tired. Even if I call you a coward and a thief? Names will never hurt me. Well, if I... Ah. Johnny Dollar. This is Henry Myers, Dollar. Be over here in five minutes. I'll give you the stuff you want. Don't move. I'll be there. You want Myers? He feels talkative. Come on, let's go. How did you know he would call? I didn't. Then why were you waiting? What else could I do? Ah, the American mind. Shrewd. Here, let me over the next corner. All right. And uh, pick me up in about a quarter of an hour. No, no, no. I go in with you. All right, come on then. Do not run so fast. Oh, my ain't peeped. Pooped. Pooped, peep. No answer. Look. Look on the floor. Maya. Looks like somebody had an earlier appointment. He's still breathing. Myers. Who did it, Myers? Vita. Go to Ver Vita. Ver... She's there. What is Ver Vita? Don't look at me, Seeker. I don't speak the language. Somebody's calling. Mrs. Myers, come on, Seeker. Oh, hello. What you been doing? Talking to Henry? Uh, don't go in there, Mrs. Myers. Why not? I get poison oak or something. It's my house. Hey, don't, Mrs. Myers. It's your husband. What's the matter with him? He's dead. What? Somebody shot him. Let me in there. Mrs. Myers, please. Henry. Henry, I knew they'd do it. I knew they'd get him. I knew it. I knew it. I knew they'd get him. I knew they'd get him. I knew they'd get him. Mrs. Myers. I knew they'd get him. I know, I Mrs. Myers. Who, Mrs. Myers? Who would get him? <sighs> yeah, well, Dan. Wish I'd never heard the name. Yeah, well, Dan. <laughs> Try to remember. What does the word mean to you? Vervita. Is it a town? I don't know. A mountain? A person? Or oh, try, Mrs. Myers. Your husband must have mentioned the word here sometime. Look, if I remembered, I'd tell you, wouldn't I? Yeah. Well, the police probably seek a call about half an hour ago. Come in. Mr. Taylor? Wrong house, bud. Oh, uh, permit me to refer to my past. D O L L A R. Dollar? That's right. Oh, good. I was sent to pick you up. Oh, really? By whom? No trouble. I am properly armed. The woman and your driver will also come. Uh, better not argue, Mrs. Myers. He's the same one who killed Henry. He must be. Who's your boss, friend? Yaradan, Mr. Dollar. Peter Yaradan. <laughs> Now, Mr. Dollar. How do you do, Mr. Dollar? Mr. Yaradan? Correct. Be seated, please. I will send my man for something cool. No, thanks, but I'm not going to be here long. You have faith in my tolerance, Mr. Dollar. In your intelligence, Mr. Yaradan. A man of your reputation should know better than to play with guns. At times, a man of my reputation has no choice. Ah, careful, Mr. Dollar. Let's get to the point. Very well. I hear that your investigation is not progressing very satisfactorily. I thought perhaps a rest might gain you a new perspective. I doubt it. Tell me, how is dear Mr. Hutt? He's not so good. Oh, shit. He tells so many tales that are untrue. He is lucky to be dying of natural causes. Something I hope I should be spared. Just keep piling up that manganese, Mr. Yarden, and you won't have to worry. Is Mr. Halley telling that silly, silly story again? 
If you mean the one about your wrecking locomotives and spreading false financial rumors, yes. Oh, you don't really believe that nonsense, do you? I'm not paid to believe anything, Mr. Yarrett, and I'm like an old hound. I just follow my nose. That is not very complimentary. You can take it for what it's worth. I like you, Donna. Business-minded, dogged, courage to the point of bravado. You would not consider taking a position with me at, uh, let us say, three times your present annual income, would you? Funny way to offer a man a job, Yarrett, with one finger on the trigger. Well, I would prefer to keep our relationship on this plane until I find out your position. I'm afraid we wouldn't get along, Yaradin. <sighs> you are probably right. And it is such a shame, Mr. Dollar. You could have gotten so much more per hour while you were still alive. <laughs> Make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. A lively, full-bodied, real mint flavor cools your mouth, moistens your throat, freshens your taste. And the chewing itself gives you a little lift, helps you keep going at your best. So for real chewing enjoyment that's refreshing and long-lasting, always keep Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. Healthful, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum will make every day more enjoyable. And now with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return you to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Yaradon smiled, but this was his living room. He wouldn't do it here. In that small moment of silence... I tried to see everything within my field of vision without taking my eyes from Yaradin's face. There was the blur of something metal to my right, something that curved toward the ceiling, something a few inches from my hand. I reached out and pushed it over on top of him. The floor lamp landed on his chest, and the shot went wild. I threw my arms in front of my face and jumped out a latticed window. I landed about ten feet down in Yaradin's rock garden, right in the middle of a clump of stubby cactus. I ran out through the open gate, and I didn't stop running until I found myself at the San Carlos Hotel. Expense account item two, three, four, five, and six, thirty dollars and fifty-nine cents miscellany to tie up the loose ends. For example, telegrams, one to Holly, wishing him better health and asking him for a definition of the word their vida. Two more to the police of Bom Despacho and Victoria, requesting reports on the crashes. Another to the company in Hartford, gently hinting at foul play. I wrote a full report of my findings, including names, left it with the notary public at the hotel, and ambled casually back to the large house of Peter Yaradin. Hello, bud. Well, don't just stand there with your teeth showing. Invite me in. Thank you. Now run to the study like a good little boy and tell your boss he has a caller. Hurry up now. Who uh, uh, put up your hands, Mr. Dollar? Don't be silly. You don't think I'd come back here without adequate protection? Put that thing away. Come with me. Come in. Mr. Yaradan, it's Mr. Dollar. I'm back. Couldn't leave without getting an apology, Yaradan. This is a surprise seeing you again. All right, Flash, you can go. But, Mr. Yarrow, last time... It is all right. I will be perfectly safe. Yes, sir. I will be at the door. You made a brilliant exit, Mr. Dollar. However, it is a shame I frightened you with my innocent conversation. Fear comes in handy sometimes, Yarrow. It saved my skin a couple of times lately. You have contacted the police? Not about you. You have come alone? Alone. You have a remarkable mind, Dollar. You think I can allow you to leave this house? Not only leave this house, mister... But leave with some information. <laughs> I filed a full report, complete with names, places, and time of day. If I'm not back to get that report in two hours, it goes to the police department. And just where did you file this report, Mr. Dollar? That's the little secret right there. I am holding two friends of yours, you know. I know. I would exchange their lives for the report. I'm sick of your office, Yarden. You're going to release Mrs. Myers and Seeker, and you're going to tell me all about the word Bervida. How I wish I had a man like you working for me. 
Pervida, Yarada. Of course, Pervida. But what you are really asking is, did I have any part in the railroad matter? You can answer that one, too. The answer is no. You don't believe me. Go on. The Belo Horizonte Railroad has been on the verge of bankruptcy for two years. But Mr. Bellum Benjamin Halley is a very stubborn man. I have offered to buy him out a thousand times. And he'd rather sell to the devil. I think he would. You see, the manganese fields in the Minas Gerais are owned by a competitor of mine. A small competitor, but a competitor. These fields are very valuable. At the rate of their present exploitation, however, they make little profit. Yeah, small operation. Exactly. If I had the fields, I could make them pay and pay very well. If I owned the railroad, I could boost the freight rates, force my competitor out of business, and take over the fields. But Holly refuses to sell, even at a large profit. And the crashes? They should be obvious, especially to you and insurance men. His railroad is failing. So it is, he is scuttling his equipment and getting the insurance money. And Bervita? Hey. <laughs> If I could get to him, I would have all the information I need to put Honey where he belongs. Okay, Aaron. I uh, sense something of disbelief in your tone. There are other possibilities. Oh. Right now, I'll keep them to myself. Dollar, I will give you $10,000 not to deliver your report. I'm glad you made that offer, Aaron. That tells me a lot. Tells you what? That you've been giving me a nice mixture of facts and fancy. Now bring Sika and Mrs. Myers down here. We're going back to the hotel. Look, Mrs. Myers, whoever he is, wherever he is, his life's in danger. If you don't trust me, you better find somebody real fast or Mr. Bervita is going to be dead. Oh, they wouldn't kill him. He's in somebody's way, or Yaradan wouldn't be that interested. All right, all right. There was 20 killed in the four crashes, Mr. Dollar. 20 dead, that's right. Yeah, and one injured. Ah, a survivor. The only witness. Bervita. Yeah, Bervita. Where is he? Small cabin in the mountains. I'm the only one that knows besides Henry. Henry's dead. Bervita was fireman on one of the engines that crashed near Victoria. He saw somebody pull the hand switch... So the two locomotives were on the same track. The engineer put on the brakes, but not quick enough. Bervita jumped. Thanks, Mrs. Myers. I think I'll have the notary mail that report on Yaradan to Hartford for safekeeping. And, Seeker, my boy, we're going to pay our respects to Mr. Bervita. You stay here in the hotel, Mrs. Myers. I want to know who killed my husband. I'll give you that information when I get back. I'll contact Rio and have Mr. Hulley's secretary put through an authorization for a locomotive and engineer to take me up. There's a dirt road, Mr. Dollar. Why don't you take a car? No, no, no. no I think the locomotive is much faster. Seeger's right, Mrs. Myers. We'll go by rail. Uh, Mr. Dollar. Yeah? Uh, would you mind very much if I stayed here in Belo Horizonte? <laughs> Wife and children, you know. Well, I never would have put you down as having a family, Seeger. Well, to tell the truth, I don't, but someday I hope to have. <laughs> Anybody's question. Even for Henry Myers? What about Henry Meyer? They killed him. Good. I'm glad they got him. As much as I hate them, I hate him worse. He was the one who saw the wheel pins. I'm glad they got him. And who pulled the switch handle? I'm not answering any questions. Go away. Go away or I shoot. Go away. Look out, look out. Down the dog. Who is it, Seeker? For dark, I couldn't see. He's running through the engine. Get that light out. We'll make too good a target at the door. Yes, come this way. He's just guessing, Seeker. Yes, but that was a good guess. I could hear it. Come on, Seeker. Let's get down to that engine. Oh, I wish I had a gun. I wish you had a gun. I wish one of the two of us had a gun. Hey, someone is climbing into the cab. 
The engine's on a hit. We'll not take too long to start. Look. Look, he's dumped the engine here to the ground. The engine is starting. We'll never get there in time. Stop! Stop! He's going too fast. There's a curve up ahead. They're much too fast. Look. We can't make the curve. What could it be? There is nothing left of it, Mr. Dollar. Nothing but twisted pipe. Look out. Don't touch it, please. Most of it's still at boiling point. There is no sign of anyone. Yeah, but there was someone in that cab. Must be a trace of them somewhere around here. Come on, let's keep looking. But the boiler exploded. You think there was any part of a man in this bunch of wreck? You're crazy, Mr. Dollar. Sick. Look, look there. Oh, yeah. You find something? Yeah. There's a wallet. The outside's burned to a crisp. But can you open it? Yeah, but I can't read the cup. Wait. There's one that isn't burned. Ah, uh ah. -huh. What does it say, Mr. Bell? It says, this certifies that the holder is a 25-year member of the Railway Engineers of South America. And the name? What is the name? Benjamin J. Hulley, late president of the Bellows Horizonte Railroad. <laughs> Here's the way it added up. Hully had come by car. We found it just off the dirt road a mile down from their Vita's shack. The murder of Henry Myers remains an unsolved case. Police assume someone in the employ of Benjamin Hully pulled the trigger, but I guess they'll never know for sure. Due to my report and public resentment against him, Yaradan was forced to leave the country. The Belo Horizonte Railroad is now in receivership, but it's still hauling manganese from the interior. I might say this was one case that had me stumped right up to train time. Expense account item 7, same as item 1, $500.38, transportation to New York and Hartford. Expense account total, $1,492.54. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends, to make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. There's lots of cooling, real mint flavor in every stick. And chewing Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert. You feel better, work better, get more fun out of doing things. So indoors, outdoors, wherever you go, keep some healthful, refreshing Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brought to you by Wrigley's Spearmint Gum, stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd and David Ellis with music composed and conducted by Leap Stevens. Edmund O'Brien can soon be seen starring in the Columbia Pictures production, 7-Eleven Ocean Drive. Featured in tonight's cast were Bob Griffin, Francis X. Bushman, Anthony Barrett, Martha Wentworth, Joe Duvall, Jack Crucian, and Ted DeCorsia. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum every day. We invite you to join us again next week at the same time when, from Hollywood, Edmund O'Brien returns in another adventure of... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.